jewels. We have, tell me if I'm off track here, we have two apartments at the Galaxy. They're over 1,900 square feet. We're renting them out. Maintenance is just short of $1,900 per unit, plus we have taxes about $8,000 per unit. Sometimes tenants don't pay. I believe we've had to depreciate these units over 27 and a half to 30 years, so our value is zero. Am I on the right track? No. No? no? Uh, that's just an accounting mechanism, so I don't know what you mean by your, your, our value is zero. What, what's shown on if, we were to, if we were to sell it, would we have 100% capital gain because we've owned them for 30 years? Oh, would we have a taxable gain? Right. I, I believe that is taxable. Okay. So what I'm getting at is because these are big liabilities to us. If we sold these units, could we use them for 1031 even exchange, buy some of the units that are in foreclosure, get our maintenance back that's due when we sell it, recoup that maintenance, and take those mo the money, the profit when we sell those units, to parlay them to buy more units that are in foreclosure? Okay. Am I off track? No, let me, let me address something. And, and you're right on track in, in strategy. One thing that the FAC has focused on is that the obvious way to start to unwind the bad debtor problem is to somehow force a transfer of ownership of the bad units. We're junior in line in most of these cases and the, and, and the units are underwater. The banks don't really want to foreclose. I believe we have a position to try to force a foreclosure sale as a junior creditor. And sometimes we might come out successful in some form of workout, depending upon what happens with the bank. But it is an, a more expensive procedure, and we're generally talking about the irretrievably hopeless uh, and insolvent uh, uh, unit owners. So we haven't quite gotten to that. There's been a lot on our plate for the last year and a half to solve. But one of the ideas would be, yeah, great. If we had 20,000 here or there, let's go in, force a foreclosure, credit bid, and, and put some money into the deal and buy some units cheap. And Richard Vasquez and I had an idea that we could make a proposal to one of the banks if there are several units all financed by the same lender that we could do a package deal, but we need some substantial capital to do it. Can I and you're raising it? an interesting point because it? you're saying let's free up some capital perhaps. Okay, but another way, how about getting a group of investors from the Galaxy who might want to buy those units, take their profit when they sell after the Galaxy gets its money. If the Galaxy doesn't have money to buy these foreclosures in auction, we got some rich people here who might want to parlay their money. We, we've talked about that too, and, and Richard and I, I just strategically as we business people, we're buy them. thought about it. <laughs> you know, we, we felt that right now there, there's a conflict where, where we're concerned, but basically that is the way to think because that may be the only, the best way to extricate some of these units because we don't know how long this goes on for. Um, I just want to ask one more question. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, whoever's most familiar with our bylaws that our bylaws do not permit second and third, et cetera, mortgages, is that correct? That's yes, correct. What is the board of directors and council doing to ensure that when I buy my next unit, I don't have a second loan on it, second mortgage? How can you stop this? So it's bad enough that we're third in place, taxes, mortgage, and then us. How can you stop from being fifth or sixth in place if there are other mortgages out there? It's a bylaw. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a, good, that's a good question. The problem is that really there's no way under the current setup for us to know. If you own a unit and you go out and try to get a second mortgage, in theory what is supposed to happen is that the bank then does a, a title search, which is a title search, they look at the master deed, and uh, it's not in the bylaws, it's in the master deed, which is a lot better than being in the bylaws. So in theory, what should happen is the bank should say, well, we're not going to give you a second mortgage unless you get the permission of the board. That's how it's supposed to work. Unfortunately, that's not what happens. We might be able to do a Well, you gap. mentioned that, if I may, what? Slava, he mentioned this last year, and I think that the board and everybody, remember, I even asked everybody here, if we put up uh, a, 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 an amendment to the bylaws 
requesting that we have first lien on 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 on, um, on an apartment as opposed to the bank that everyone said that they well the people here the vast majority said they would go for that. But Richard, was anything I don't think we would get was any was any no but but at least you have the control. In Trump Towers, I got a package, you know, and, and, and it, I was asked to look into different condos and see how they're handling this, okay? I got a, a, a package from Trump Towers, and one of the things they do, and they're a condominium, okay, is they give any prospective condominium owner or renter a, a, a package that they have to fill, that they have to fill out. And within that package, there is some level of due diligence on who's coming in. Now, part of the problem, of course, is that there's been a, 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 an impact on the, uh, on the value of apartments. The other side of that coin is that a lot of people bought in and continue to buy that can't afford it. And we're not part of that filtering. Richard, let me answer your question. Can I let me make finish a suggestion? Answering, can I, let me finish answering your question first. Okay. Um, because I don't think doing something to the bylaws necessarily will accomplish that much. We still have the same notice problem. However, at, at the master deed is a lot, it's a lot better to have it in the master deed because the master deed, the banks have to live with. The, what we have been looking at is the possibility of filing a test case and attempting to get a court to disallow a second mortgage in terms of our priority. And what we are looking for is a case where we can go to court and get a court to say, well, all right, you may have a second mortgage, but uh, that second mortgage is inferior to the lien of the, of the galaxy because you didn't get the permission of the board. Now, we need a specific set of facts to make that case workable. We need to find somebody with a first and second mortgage and a lien where the first mortgage is not underwater. Um, so there's a certain set of financial criteria we have to find before we can have that case. If we can find that set of facts and file that lawsuit and win, I think there will be a dramatic change in the way banks start dealing with second and third mortgages because now there will be a case that says you're in trouble if you don't get board approval. Good idea. Agree to it. What I'd like to recommend for now is that anytime somebody refinances or purchases, a condo questionnaire is filled out by Cooper Square. And before that is sent back, I would like that cover sheet to state you may not have a second mortgage on this property. It's a good point. Yes. yes. I'll hand you one. Point. Point. Yes. I'll hand the board over what yes. I got from Trump. Yes. But Richard, uh, briefly, I did discuss this issue with two bankers, and they said that if they're going to, if you're going to have a right, they, they, they cannot give up their right. Even collecting rent from apartment may jeopardize uh, people from buying apartment because the rent rent rent, rent roll is generally is collateral uh, for not paying uh, for this obligation. So it may create a problem. It may be it's a good way to go. It may create a problem. Um, because it may exclude investors, and it may take a little time for this property to transform itself into owner-occupied only, because no investors will be welcomed here. But then before we get there, we have to fix a couple of things first uh, to be when compared to Trump Tower. So, any more? Yes, please. Yeah. I have a question about the mall. Is this uh, financial statement includes the revenues from the mall or not? Yes. It does. It, it yes. Assessment. Okay, and you know, we keep saying we don't have money, but I want to know who financed the face lift of the mall, which happened like... The mall? Yeah. yeah. And I think the mall is the apartment. Mall is the same type of unit, owner as you are and I right. I have 1546, they have 80,000 square feet. So we you have re relatively similar, in, in the natural, similar relationship between both. I want to upgrade my kitchen, I pay my own money. They wanted to upgrade their kitchen, they pay their own money. So whatever they've done, whatever they've done, they borrowed, and they invested to it. They invested themselves. Yes. And they pay rent to us or to They pay maintenance to us on my on, on, on yearly basis. It's about two hundred and fifty thousand dollars per year. It's a, it's it's disclosed here. And uh, unfortunately since last quarter of last year, two thousand nine, they stopped paying. But the part which was spun off, the part which are individual home uh, commercial unit owners are still paying us. Okay. 